Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today, and we're back with some latest space updates. We'll start with SpaceX getting three additional launch contracts from NASA, then we'll discuss SpaceX as the savior of the ISS. We'll wrap up with Ukraine receiving Starlink dish deliveries from SpaceX. Let's get started with SpaceX getting three more crewed launch contracts from NASA. Recently, NASA has awarded three more Crew Dragon launch contracts to SpaceX. As per reports, NASA awards SpaceX additional crew flights to the ISS as part of its Commercial Crew Transportation Capability contract following the agency's notice of intent to procure the flights in December 2021, brings total missions for SpaceX to nine. In the end of 2021, NASA had planned to award additional launch contracts to their Commercial Crew Program CCP, partners SpaceX and Boeing for their Commercial Crew Transportation Capability contract. As Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is not yet ready and remains years behind schedule, thus all the additional contracts were directed towards SpaceX, which is almost regularly flying their Crew Dragon spacecraft for crewed and uncrewed missions. Report SpaceX now remains on track to launch Crew-4 no earlier than the 15th of April 2022, followed by Crew-5 in October 2022, and Crew-6 in February 2023. It's estimated that SpaceX may become able to complete all six of their first operational crew transport missions before Boeing Starliner spacecraft completes one single mission. And according to present circumstances, chances are increasing that SpaceX may launch all six of their original crew missions before Starliner even attempts for their first crewed test flight. Actually, in December 2021, NASA's plans had come out after a request for information was revealed. In the beginning, it was expected that RFI would indicate an attempt to develop one or more additional crew transport vehicles, but it ultimately resulted in making NASA procure further flights from the existing providers. SpaceX, being the active one, got it readily. NASA announced that the recent three additional transport contracts will raise the total value of SpaceX's Commercial Crew Transportation Capability contract from about $2.6 billion to $3.49 billion. According to NASA's Office of the Inspector General, out of the original $2.6 billion awarded to SpaceX for the Commercial Crew Program, SpaceX planned to use $1.2 billion for development and test flight of Dragon spacecraft and $1.4 billion for about the first six operational Crew Dragon missions. Report says that NASA has then to pay a total of $230 million for each of their first six Crew Dragon transport missions. In the recent contract modification of NASA, the space agency will now pay nearly $890 million for the additional three launches. It's estimated that NASA will pay nearly $300 million apiece for the three more transport missions. For the first six missions, NASA pays an average of $55 million per seat, but for these three additional launches, the agency will be paying a higher price of $75 million per seat. Despite this rise in price tag, it will still be cheaper than the price tag of Boeing's Starliner or Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, which stands at $90 million per seat. Let's move on to our next update, where SpaceX comes up as the savior of the International Space Station. On the 27th of February, Russian President Vladimir Putin had declared a nuclear alert, a move that only increased international tension. At present, with this worsening situation, several companies and countries around the world have been breaking ties with Russia in space. The influence of the Russia-Ukraine crisis is not limited to the ground or air of those two countries, but also to other superpowers and space as well. Russia had already threatened the functioning of the International Space Station, even hinting towards total destruction of the station. And SpaceX now rises as the savior and future for the functioning of the station. After Russia had invaded Ukraine, 
U.S. President Joe Biden had announced that the U.S. government would implement new sanctions that would significantly affect Russia's space program. Dmitry Rogozin, the Director General of Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, replied, Do you want to destroy our cooperation on the ISS? If you block cooperation with us, who will save the ISS from uncontrolled deorbiting and falling into the United States or Europe? There is also the option of dropping a 500-ton structure to India and China. Do you want to threaten them with such a prospect? The ISS does not fly over Russia, so all the risks are yours. Are you ready for them? SpaceX CEO Elon Musk gave a smart reply to the Roscosmos Director General by posting an image of the SpaceX logo to Rogozin. This indicates that if Russia endangers the ISS, SpaceX will save it. Musk has ambitious plans for making humans multi-planetary species in the future. In compliance with those ambitious plans, it's quite plausible that SpaceX will alone be capable of supporting all launches and necessary maneuvers to keep the space station functioning. SpaceX also almost regularly ferries astronauts to and from the International Space Station. This regular launch readiness from SpaceX has helped NASA to reduce dependence on Russian Soyuz rides. And in the times to come, it's possible that SpaceX could fully replace the need for Russia's Soyuz capsule. In his tweet, Rogozin had said that if Russia's Soyuz craft will not boost the space station, then it would deorbit and fall to Earth. But technically, any visiting spacecraft with extra fuel can boost the station and keep it going as it has been. So there's a high chance that SpaceX Dragon can do this boost work very well. And if SpaceX feels that the thrust of Dragon is not powerful enough for boosting the station, then they may go for an upgrade or may develop a new version. So we can say that ISS and NASA may no longer need Russia's Soyuz. They have the Dragon. But presently, Russian Soyuz spacecraft will continue to provide service as NASA has said that it will continue to use Russian capsules to return astronauts to home. As per NASA's schedule, Mark Vandehei, a NASA astronaut, is scheduled to return to Earth from the ISS on the 30th of March 2022 aboard the Russian Soyuz MS-19. And recently, on the 28th of February, NASA confirmed that Vandehei will return home as previously planned so there will be no change of plan. In our next update, we'll discuss Ukraine receiving a good number of Starlink terminals from SpaceX to restore connectivity. According to reports, Ukraine has received a delivery of hundreds of Starlink user terminals from SpaceX. The Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mikhailo Fedorov, shows his gratitude towards Musk over Twitter. He wrote, Starlink, here, thanks Elon Musk. Fedorov also shared a picture of the delivered terminals. According to Ukrainians, the Starlink satellite internet service is now working well in the country. The delivery contained almost 100 to 200 Starlink dish setups. With this prompt delivery, SpaceX has kept their promise and ensured that a significant portion of Ukrainians will be able to stay connected to high-quality internet, while Russian invasion has almost devastated their connectivity infrastructure. Michael Sheets, a space reporter, tweeted while tagging Fedorov's Thanksgiving to Musk. Sheets wrote, Less than 48 hours after Musk said SpaceX's Starlink dish were en route, a shipment arrives. In this situation of nightmare at Ukraine, Starlink dishes will become another useful tool in the country's arsenal by providing stronger network connection and helping in drawing defensive plans in front of Russian invasion. At present, Ukraine has no known ground stations, so how SpaceX's Starlink internet constellation will reach all over Ukraine is still in question. Report says for the Starlink connection to work, an active Starlink satellite should have a direct line of sight to each user terminal and a larger ground station. Sources state that signals from individual dishes travel up to a nearby Starlink satellite, which then routes those communications to a local ground station connected to the rest of the global internet. As Ukraine has no permanent ground station, it's plausible that ground stations of neighboring countries will be used for connectivity. As per reports, Starlink users must generally be within 250 miles of a ground station to connect to use the service. And a ground station located in central Poland may provide connection to a part of western Ukraine. Report says that a series of ground stations in Poland, Lithuania, and Turkey collectively cover most of Ukraine, 
and if they were taken into account, then the connection will have greater coverage. SpaceX's newer Starlink V1.5 satellites with laser interlinks can technically connect users anywhere on Earth, but at present, only 100 satellites have reached operational orbit and another 300-plus satellites are on their way to final orbit, thus creating a bit delay from stronger and reliable connection. But still, when the alternative is nothing, any solution, whether with some challenges, becomes a good way out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.